Okay, let's cut to the chase. Here are all the timestamps for things that I'm going to talk about in this video. That said, enjoy. So hello, I've been using Flash for about 3 years now, specifically Macromedia Flash 8, and uh, I'm gonna teach you how to make stuff look decent in an old version of Flash. So let's begin. Uh, first of all, setting up Flash for the first time. When you first open up Flash, it's gonna look something like this. I mean, you can draw on it, and I guess it looks okay, but as you can see, the aspect ratio is all weird, and if we actually look at the properties, oh no, it is not HD, it is not even close. So we're gonna fix that, we're gonna change the aspect ratio to 16 by 9 by making it 1080p which is full HD if you didn't know uh, and we're gonna make the frame rate 24 FPS and we're gonna change the background to a gray uh, this is not mandatory but it makes it better for the eyes and I guess you could put it at 720p which is 1280 times 720 but unless you really need to like save up space on your computer then don't do that it's it looks worse but yeah you can make it a default if you don't already have it as a default, which I guess you don't if you are opening up Flash for the first time, but I already have it as a default, so I don't need that. So, now it looks normal. And one thing that we need to do before we start drawing is that if you have a pen if you have a pen tablet, you will have this option here to click for pen pressure, which basically makes your line have this cool variety and now you can draw like a pro yay okay let's close this down so the next part is da -da 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 -da. the lines in flash so basically flash has two types of lines there are fills and there are strokes and the main difference is that strokes don't have pen pressure which gives them sort of this bland look I guess and if we zoom out you can see that the strokes are actually getting a bit thicker while the fills are staying the same uh, so the fills are basically the brush tool and the paint pocket tool and the strokes cover the line tool the pencil tool and all the like shape tools I guess um, and uh, I guess we'll move on uh, all the shortcuts there's a lot of shortcuts for things so the brush is B the eraser is E or if you have a pen tablet uh, at least from Wacom you'll have a eraser at the end of your pen at the other side of your pen so the select is V and the free transform is Q which means you can do all sorts of things to things yay and uh, the lasso tool is L which means you can select like this which is neat uh, and the line tool oh no the pencil tool is Y wow and the line tool is N the hand tool is H uh, and basically what that does is you can move your thing around. Uh, the eyedropper tool is I so if we want this blue here we can click it and we have the blue. Uh, and then for non tool shortcuts uh, we have the undo which is control Z or Z, redo which is control Y and select all which is control A and delete which is control X uh, and then we have one frame to the right which is uh, like the period like this and one frame to the left which is the colon I guess yeah and then we have zoom in which is control plus and zoom out which is control minus and then we have the timeline. Oh boy, this is gonna get complicated. 
So try to follow me. Um, this is the timeline. We can move around the timeline and do all sorts of things. It has layers and, uh, well, I'll explain that later. So every one of these is a keyframe and you can extend them by pressing F5. Look at that! Now this one single image extends for two frames. Um, and to know if a, a frame is empty or uh, like filled with things, if it's white like this, it's empty, and if it's gray and has a black dot, it's it has something in it. And yeah, you can extend the frames as long as you want. There's, I think there's a limit at some point, but you're probably never gonna face it. Yeah, um, so I'm gonna, this is a pretty basic timeline, it only has one layer. So I'm gonna show you a timeline of a finished cartoon, actually my latest cartoon, it's Boy. And uh, there's a lot of things going on, this is a long, t pretty t long timeline, I guess. Well, not long, since it's only like a 11 second cartoon, but it has a lot of stuff. It has a lot of layers. So, uh, what what basically this means is that uh, the layers that are on top display in front of the layers that are on the bottom. <coughs> um, so, if we start removing these, we can see that parts of it start disappearing. Until we have nothing left like that. But yeah, um, uh, as you can see, there's a lot of frames, and I do the thing where I actually animate on twos, which means one one uh, drawing uh, stays for two frames. It's so. It saves time and it doesn't look bad. So it's basically running at 12 FPS, I guess, for the most of most of the time. Uh, but yeah, and that's how time the timeline works. And also, the numbers here display on what frame you're on. And also, here's a more accurate representation. So if we go here, we can see that we're on frame 59. Uh, you can interpret it from here, but it's faster this way. Uh, okay, and then on to the next thing, uh, smooth lines. So uh, first thing, have your pen pressure on, it makes a huge difference, look at that. And the other thing is, Flash has this thing called smoothing, which basically means that because it's a vector based program, it has all these anchor points. I mean which you can pull like this and you can morph these you can morph all the fills like this so um, smoothing basically tries to reduce the amount of anchor points um, so if you have the smoothing at zero it leaves all these anchor points and it looks messy and if you have it too high it cuts a lot of corners and it looks bad and here I have it at 40% and it looks fine, I guess. Uh, and then, one of the hardest things to do is to draw faster. This is exactly what it sounds like. But, to demonstrate, uh, I drew this at a pace of this. And I drew this like this. Uh, by drawing faster, it reduces the amount of anchor points. It's just how Flash works, I guess. I guess it's hard to explain. But yeah, uh, the fourth thing is zoom in on your drawings. This was made like maybe 25% uh, farther than everything. Uh, so it looks like garbage when you zoom in on it, like afterwards. But this was made with a a 200% zoom and it looks better 
This is a radical example, but it gives you the idea of the effect that it has. Okay, moving on. So, if all of those techniques fail, or you're just lazy, you can do some post-correction. So we have two phases here. I haven't done anything yet, but I'll do something now to demonstrate. So we're going to fix the one on the right. And first of all, uh, delete the overlapping lines. Like you can erase them out or do like this. Select them with the lasso tool and just delete them with Control X and just fix all the gaps. I'm gonna actually leave that like that to prove a point. But yeah, the next thing you can do is select the thing and select smoothing, which smoothens it out. And it's rad. And the next, you know, thing is that you can drag these anchor points down to make something look a bit better, like that. And then you can smooth this out. And holy moly, are we looking better? So I'm just gonna do this. And in almost no time at all, it oh, oh, it's not actually good yet. Okay, that's as far as I'm gonna do it right now. But you can see the difference. This is all like post drawing corrections. Like I did almost no actual drawing in this phase. So that's how you can fix a drawing pretty f fast. Um, and just because I put coloring in here, I'm just gonna show you you how to color. It's not that complicated. You pick the uh, paint bucket tool with K, and you fill. And now you have a fill drawing. That's it's that simple. Okay, let's move on to the next thing. Is shading. I mean, shading's one of my favorite things to do. Especially in Flash, because because it's real easy. Uh, yeah, and this is where we utilize the pencil tool. Like I don't really like drawing with the pencil tool, but it's good for shading. Because we can do this. You might be thinking, what are these? But you will see in a moment. So we're just gonna like make these areas where we think the shadow will be. And we're gonna continue doing this. And I've already picked out the shadow colors. This is not a drawing tutorial, this is just a tutorial on Flash. So I'm not gonna show you how to pick nice colors or anything like that. Um, that's probably fine. So we can fill the selected areas with the pen pencil tool. And so and so we can make some nice shading so you can't really do complex shading in flash easily i mean you could basically like make uh lines with the alpha like declining alpha to make it like smooth shading but that's that's not healthy you shouldn't really do that but yeah, I'm just gonna shape this really quickly, so not a lot of effort here, I guess. Uh, and then when we're done, we're just gonna move these lines by double clicking the them, and 
voila, we have some sort of shading. And I'm actually gonna do some highlights to make it seem even better. And the highlights can be done the exact same way as the shading. And that's how you shade in Flash, like the most basic shading you can do in Flash. And it looks a lot better. I guess. Yeah, it does. Okay, so the last thing, oh uh, well, yeah, this is the last thing, uh, is how to get the best quality out of your Flash. So, for this thing, we have this little demo animation, which is not really an animation. I'm just gonna play it to you. This is a very funny voice clip. Yeah, wasn't that a funny voice clip? But yeah, the thing is, it sounds good here. Yeah, but when we go to control and test movie, this is a very funny voice clip. This is a very funny voice clip. Something happened. It's not as good quality wise. So, here's what we have to do. We have to go into file, publish shading, publish shading uh, to flash, put the JPEG quality to 100, uncheck the compress movie thing, and audio stream to 160 kilobytes, uncheck that, best, and do the exact same thing to the other audio thing. And that's pretty much it. You click OK, and now when we test it, this is a very funny voice clip. This is a very funny voice clip. It's fine. It works. So uh, then, when you have the finished thing, the finished animation, you have to convert the SWF to MP4 using Swivel, which is a software designed just to do that. Um, it's open source from Newgrounds, and I can link you, link it in the description of this video. But that's pretty much all. I hope you learned something, or this was entertaining in any way. Uh, I'll see you probably with an animation or something like that in a while.